In this module, we will basically have an overview about oxygen carriers present in living systems. In this regard, we will first try to understand the need for oxygen carriers in living systems. Then, learn about the different kinds of oxygen carriers in vertebrates and invertebrates. Learn about the structure of oxygen carriers, hemocyanin, hemerythrin, and hemoglobin. And understand the role of transition metal ions in these oxygen carriers. Most living organisms need dioxygen to perform respiration, which is the breakdown of food products to release energy. There are two principal ways in which dioxygen is supplied to the cells. One mode of transportation is the blood plasma. However, dioxygen has a very low solubility in water, about 7.6 milligram per liter at 20 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. The other way of transportation of dioxygen is with help of dioxygen carrying molecules in the blood plasma. This mechanism is capable of transporting large amount of dioxygen. Only about 1.5% of the dioxygen transported by the blood is dissolved directly in the blood plasma. Rest is done by oxygen carriers. Oxygen carriers are special type of metalloproteins which have a transition metal from 3D series bound to a protein. Only those transition metals can form dioxygen complexes with oxygen which have vacant sites for binding and can exist in higher oxidation states. The common metal ions are iron, copper and vanadium and the commonly encountered stoichiometries in oxygen carriers are 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 2. The metal binds reversibly to dioxygen without the metal or ligand being irreversibly oxidized. More broadly, a complex which can uptake dioxygen and can release it reversibly under ordinary conditions can be called a biological oxygen carrier. The extent of binding will depend on temperature, partial pressure of oxygen and the pH. The binding can be represented by the reaction ML plus NO2 reversibly combine to give you MLO2N. In this reaction, ML is a complex that acts as a dioxygen carrier. In order for transition metal complexes to form dioxygen complexes, there must be a vacant site or sites for binding and an accessible higher oxidation state. There are three known classes of dioxygen transport proteins. You have hemocyanins, hemerythrins and the hemoglobin myoglobin family. Let us try to understand each class. The first class we will discuss is the hemocyanins. Hemocyanins are oxygen carrying proteins or oxygen carriers in invertebrates such as mollusks, Examples of mollusks are octopus, snails and squids. And we have arthropods. The example of this category are scorpions, crabs, lobsters and many others. Hemocyanin is an extracellular protein which is present in the hemolymph. Although the oxygen binding sites and the function of molluscan and arthropod hemocyanins are quite similar. They are different in molecular structure at all levels. Arthropod hemocyanins are multiples of hexamers. Each hexamer made up of monomers. Molluscan hemocyanins occur as larger assemblies. The figure shows single oxygenated functional unit from the hemocyanin of an octopus. As you can see in the figure, hemocyanin is a copper-containing metalloprotein. 
Each monomer contains two cuprous ions. Cuprous ion is copper in plus one oxidation state. And you have an empty cavity which is present between the two cuprous ions. This cavity accommodates the dioxygen. One molecule would bind reversibly to one dioxygen. The copper-copper bond distance in hemocyanin is 460 picometer. The coordination number of each copper is 3. This coordination number is satisfied by 3 histidine residues from the protein. So the geometry around each copper is a distorted trigonal pyramidal geometry. There are two phenylalanine residues which are in close proximity to the histidine residues. These phenylalanine residues provide a hydrophobic environment at the active site. The binding of dioxygen to the copper one at the active site leads to many changes. Your copper is oxidized from plus one state to the plus two state. The dioxygen is reduced to the peroxide species which is O2 2 minus. Coordination number of each copper changes to five from three. This leads to a change in geometry of each copper. The geometry is now square pyramidal Earlier, it was trigonal pyramidal. The equatorial plane has two histidyl imidazole nitrogens and the bound oxygen. They are coordinated to copper, which is present at the center of the equatorial plane. And the third histidyl residue, the nitrogen, is axially coordinated to copper. The copper-copper distance decreases to 360 picometers from 460 picometers. And the color of the protein changes from colorless to blue. In hemocyanin, oxidative addition of dioxygen occurs. The evidence for the peroxo linkage comes from Raman spectroscopy. The stretching frequency for the OO stretch is observed at 744 centimeter inverse. The theoretical stretching frequency for peroxo is 740 to 930 centimeter inverse. This confirms the presence of peroxo. Experiments using asymmetrically labeled dioxygen have proved conclusively that the coordination of dioxygen to copper 2 is symmetrical as can be seen in the figure. The next class of oxygen carriers we're going to study is hemerythrin. Hemerythrin is a reversible oxygen binding metalloprotein. It is found in the blood cells of a few marine invertebrates. It is colorless in the deoxy form and on oxygenation the color changes to purple red. It is an oligomeric protein generally found in an optomeric form. The dimeric, trimeric and tetrameric forms of hemerythrin are also known. Each monomeric unit contains an active site which is two high spin ferrous ions. Ferrous ion is iron in 2 plus oxidation state. One of the ferrous is hexa coordinated. This ferrous has an octahedral geometry. The other ferrous is penta coordinated with a distorted trigonal bipyramidal geometry. These two ferrous ions are bridged together by three bridging ligands. One is an hydroxyl group and the other two are carboxyl groups. One carboxyl group is from an aspartate residue and the other is from a glutamate residue of the protein chain of 115 amino acid residues. The remaining three coordination sites of hexa coordinated ferrous are satisfied by three imidazole nitrogens from histidine's residues of the protein chain. The remaining two coordination sites of the penta-coordinated ferrous are satisfied by two imidazole nitrogens from the histidine residues of the protein chain 
as can be seen in the figure. One monomeric unit of hemerythrin binds one dioxygen. The dioxygen adds to hemerythrin in an oxidative manner, resulting in the formation of ferric, that is iron in plus 3 oxidation state, and the peroxide. Unlike hemocyanin, here the oxygen binds asymmetrically. The dioxygen adds to only one ferrous, the coordinatively unsaturated ferrous. This oxidative addition is followed by the shifting of proton from the bridged hydroxyl to the bound peroxide, resulting in the formation of hydroperoxo group, that is a OOH group. This hydroperoxo group is hydrogen bonded with the mu oxo group as can be seen in the figure. Experimental support for the structures has also been obtained. By use of radioisotope experiments, it was established that dioxygen binds asymmetrically in oxyhemerythrin. Single crystal extra diffraction study of oxyhemerythrin has shown end-on coordination of dioxygen to only one iron. The last but the most important oxygen carrier we will discuss in this module is hemoglobin. All of us know that hemoglobin is a biomolecule which carries oxygen in our bodies. Let us now try to understand its structure. It is a globular iron containing metalloprotein with a quaternary structure. It is found in red blood cells also called RBCs of mammals and other animals. Each RBC has 640 million molecules of hemoglobin. The synthesis of hemoglobin occurs in the developing RBCs in the bone marrow. Hemoglobin transports dioxygen from the lungs to the tissues where this oxygen is used to oxidize glucose. This process serves as a source of energy required for cellular metabolic processes. Hemoglobin also plays a role in transport of carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. The dioxygen carrying capacity of 1 liter of blood increases from 5 ml to 250 ml because of the presence of hemoglobin. The dioxygen binding capacity of hemoglobin is 1.34 ml of oxygen per gram of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has many firsts to its credit. It is the first protein to have been crystallized. The first protein with a recognized physiological purpose. The fact that it transports oxygen was discovered in 1864 and its role in CO2 transport in 1904. One of the first proteins to have its molecular weight and primary sequences established. One of the first proteins to have its tertiary and quaternary structures determined by X-ray crystallography. The structure of hemoglobin was solved by groups of Andrew Kendrew and Max Perutz. It is a tetramer with four subunits as shown in the figure. The figure shows the structure of human hemoglobin. As you can see in the figure, each subunit contains a single molecule of heme and a polypeptide chain. Heme is iron 2 protoporphyrin complex. Porphyrins are heterocyclic compounds formed by fusion of four pyrrole rings linked by methane bridges. An iron is present at the center of the protoporphyrin ring coordinated to the two nitrogens of the ring. Different types of hemoglobin are present during fetal and adult life. They differ in the kind of the polypeptide chain. The adult hemoglobin represented as 
alpha 2, beta 2 or HbA or also as HbA1 is the normal hemoglobin in adults. It has two alpha polypeptide chains and two beta polypeptide chains. The alpha chain has 141 amino acid residues and the beta has 146 amino acid residues. Minor adult hemoglobin represented as alpha 2 delta 2 or HbA2 has two alpha and two delta polypeptide chains. Fetal hemoglobin represented as alpha 2 gamma 2 or HBF is composed of two alpha and two gamma polypeptide chains. A normal adult has all three kinds of hemoglobin in the approximate amounts of 97.5% HbA, 2% HbA2 and 0.5% HbF. The secondary structure of about 75% of amino acids in alpha or beta chains is helical. Each polypeptide chain contains heme in the heme pocket. The four subunits are arranged in a tetrahedral manner and the individual polypeptide chains are folded such that the maximum number of polar or charge residues are on the outside surface of the subunit and the non-polar residues are on the inside. The exposed polar residues make the protein soluble in aqueous medium and the interior non-polar residues result in the formation of a hydrophobic pocket in which heme is present. This hydrophobic pocket hinders the oxidation of ferrous iron. We will study in the next module in detail the role of this hydrophobic pocket. The hemoglobin tetramer can be represented as two identical dimers, each being alpha, beta. Each alpha chain is in contact with both the beta chains. There are very few interactions between the two alpha chains and the two beta chains. The two polypeptide chains are held tightly within each dimer by three kinds of interactions, namely hydrophobic, ionic and hydrogen bonding. The dimers are held together by only ionic bonds and can move with respect to each other. This concludes this module. And now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Oxygen carriers are special metalloproteins which have a transition metal from 3D series bound to a protein. Three known classes of dioxygen transport proteins are hemocyanins, hemerythrin and the hemoglobin myoglobin family. Hemocyanins are copper containing dioxygen transport proteins present in mollusks and arthropods. Hemocyanins carry dioxygen as peroxide. Hemerythrin is found in marine invertebrates. It has two high spin ferrous ions and carries dioxygen as peroxide. Hemoglobin is an iron containing metalloprotein with a quaternary structure. It acts as dioxygen carrier in mammals and animals and also plays a role in transport of carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. Hemoglobin has four subunits, each subunit having a polypeptide chain and a heme unit. Heme is iron-2 protoporphyrin complex.